What's up guys? Wanted to do a video. I'm going to show you guys how to switch out a and one of the older NAEs. Uh, let me turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. What we have here is an old NAE 5510-1. Uh, there are some changes that are happening within our network for security purposes that this cannot remain. Okay, so we've got to replace it. What we're replacing it with is, of course, the new SNE 2200. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do that I've already done is you're going to want to make sure that you run a couple of backups of the system. Okay, make sure that you have not one, but at least two backups. One of which you're going to have to upgrade the archive to be able to load it into the new engine. And the other is in the event if something were to happen and worse come to worse, you had to go back with something like this. You're going to have that backup to go back to. Okay, you're not going to be able to roll back what you have done if you've only got one backup. So now what we're going to do now is simply turn power off, unplug everything, and go ahead and plug the new one in, get our network, uh, everything lined up. I've already got the network settings working with our IT. I have the IP settings set up based upon the MAC ID. That's how we do that. So basically when I power this up with the network cable in place, it will automatically pull the IP address that I need. From there, what I can do is simply browse to the device to do everything else that I need to do. That is the absolute easiest way to swap one of these out. Okay, Have your IT department or you yourself, if you have access to that, set up the IP address based upon the MAC ID of your system, of your device, and then that way when you plug it in, power it up, it automatically pulls the IP address because these are set up for DHCP enable, and then you just simply browse to the device to finish your setup. Now I have got my device plugged in, and it's just a waiting game for a few minutes. We need to give it time to boot up uh, and pay no attention to the wiring right now. I still have to clean it up. Uh, my main focus right now is to get this back online and get it back communicating. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we've got it powered up. Uh, once it does go through its boot sequence, we're simply then going to browse to the device using the original IP address. Once I enter the IP address and hit the discover, it did find it. And there again, guys, I am wireless on my laptop. One thing you can do here in the description, which I would recommend you do, just go ahead and give it a building name or whatever the system is related to and that way you'll know what it is each time you come back instead of just having an IP list when you're looking at your launcher tool uh, if you ever have to browse directly to the device again you can simply go by name but I'm going to change the name real quick and then we're going to launch into this system your first initial login it's going to give you an error basically saying that your password has expired and this is after you have entered the basically the administrative password of a new device so you do have to change that uh, this screen here you're going to enter that password again and then enter your new credentials here and make sure that you get it right and don't forget to set up your policies correctly which we'll look into in just a minute and if you have followed the guidelines correctly you will get this basically acknowledging that you have successfully changed your password now once we launch into this there's a couple things that I want to take a minute of course you do have all of this screen here that you can go through and read make sure that you understand every single word of it guys I know each and every one of you guys out there do I'm sure that you all go through take the time to read all of this okay I bet you do you know let me know down in the comments if you do but now that we have launched into this uh, there's something that you need to remember to do very very quickly and that is to go in and set up your account policies. Now just bear with me, guys. I'm doing this live. So I'm going to go to Tools. I'm going to go to Administrator. And what you want to do for your administrative policies, I'll get this pop-up, which it's no big deal. I'll take care of that later. You want to make sure for your sys agent or whatever that you set up your policies to where you're not going to lock yourself out. Okay? So I'm going to set my account policies here. To, uh, you know you can set it to password never expires or whatever but there again it really depends on what you do within your system 
and that sort of thing but just remember all of these before you lock out now what I'm going to do is go through here now set these up for what our protocols are and then we're going to come back now what I typically do is going from my archive I will simply uh, copy the name of the engine and there's a couple of places that you've got to add that into the device uh, first of all we're going to go up here I want you to pay attention to the way that this looks showing you right here it says site basically this SNE sees itself as the site director we're going to be changing that so uh, that's just going to take just a bit before you pair it to the server you need to remember this you need to make sure that you go ahead and get the name change and everything set up first okay I'm just going to go ahead on my focus tab I'm going to hit my advanced because I'm going to need that here in a minute okay I'm going to go right here where this name is I'm going to paste in the name of what the system is going to be there again I copied it right out of the archive I'm going to hit save there's one other place that I've got to set it to okay under your network this is the computer name now something that you need to remember underneath the focus tab and this is something that you could run into in some situations okay my computer is not going to let me scroll so bear with me just for a second okay I'm going to go over here and look at the site director in the ADS repository you can see here at the bottom of your screen right here the name of the engine is the current site director remember that point eventually we're going to be changing that to the server but what we're doing first is we're going to make sure that we get this set up with the correct naming and everything else that we need on our network underneath the network tab is where you're going to give it its computer name again I'm going to simply paste straight from our archive and when I save this what it's going to do then is it is going to reboot the device so I'm going to press save it's going to give me this warning I do know that it's going to reboot and I'm going to go ahead and let it reboot you need to do that before you pair it to the server if you try to change the name after you pair it to the server uh, for me my experience with that you will have a little bit of an issue I'm trying to pair it to the server and then changing the name for whatever reason it just doesn't seem to like it I don't know why I'm sure somebody out there could probably answer that question so I've just found it to where it is easier changing the name of it prior to pairing it to the server. So now what we're going to do is simply let the device reboot. We're going to then browse back into it and then I'm going to show you where you would pair it to the server. Alright guys, we are back logged into our system. Again, I want you to notice we have updated the name which is now displaying right here. Having it both in the focus as well as the computer name is critical. Uh, now what we're going to do, I'm going to double click into here and we're going to pair this system with the server. Now the thing that you need to remember before you pair this to the server, you need to make sure that you remove the original device from your system. You need to browse into Metasys and remove the original device from the system. Now the way that you will remove the original device is log into your system. We, you can see here we are in MUI. We've got an entire playlist on Metasys MUI if you're not familiar with it. I'm going to highlight that network engine and then I'm simply going to go up here and hit the trash can. Once I do that it's going to give me this warning and, and then I'm simply going to hit delete. Okay, You've got to make sure that you do that prior to pairing the new device to your system. Okay. Now we're going to jump back over to the device itself. I'm going to go back over to my advanced tab here on the right and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom okay? because I want to show you the next step that you're going to need. Right here where it says local site director and ADS repository, this is where you're going to enter the information for your server. You can see it down here at the bottom of the screen. Sorry guys, bouncing around a bit. I'm literally recording this on my phone as I'm doing it. But right there is where you're going to enter the IP address for your server. Uh, you know, and there again, for your repository in both of those two slots. Okay, and both of those, the ADS repository and the local site director. 
once you enter that it's going to give you a pop-up screen to log in to the server using the administrative credentials once you enter the IP address for your server you're going to get this pop-up window here I'm going to hit the OK button and then this is where you're going to enter the administrative credentials for your server okay and at that point this device is going to reboot again you're going to need to give it about four to five minutes for it to reboot before it's going to populate and when you first see it it is going to come up and show that it's offline basically red x out again give it you know four to five minutes it could appear at the bottom of the tree it really just depends uh, many many times I've had them to reappear in the exact same location as they were originally based upon that computer name, you know, the system. Sometimes it'll put it right back in place. Sometimes it doesn't. It's just kind of a hit and miss on that. Uh, so the other thing that you need to make sure that you do that we're going to do, I'll be showing you here is you need to make sure of the version at which that SNE is at because you've got to go into SCT, your SCT archive, and remember where I told you to make sure that you had two copies one of them you're going to do an upgrade to whatever version that new network engine is running and remember you cannot have a newer version running on an engine than what's on your server okay it has to be either at or below what your server is running now with this device selected i'm going to go up to tools and i'm going to select manage archive okay that's what you're going to want now I'm going to select Upgrade or Migrate Device and I'm going to select Next from this screen and it's going to take it just a moment. You can see here it is telling me what I currently have and basically what I need to do, this is what it was originally, I need to change it from a 55 to a 2200 and then I also need to make sure that my revision version, my firmware version matches what that engine matches okay once you do that you should be ready to go okay make sure that your box is checked that you've got green all the way around and now i'm going to hit next it's going to take it a, just a moment it's going to bring me to this review screen i want it to do it now you know i don't want to wait i could schedule this but this is something that i do want to do uh, you need to enter your credentials again if necessary that way you will be able to do this if you do not know what those credentials are, you can actually blow those out as far as right here, clear security database. But I know what the credentials are, so I do not need to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the credentials and then come right back. Once you enter your credentials, you also need to enter the default password. I'm then going to hit next, and then the system is gonna go ahead and do the upgrade. It's gonna take it just a moment. Of course, this is a review screen here. Once I hit the finish button, it is going to go out and do the upgrade on the database. Now this is basically the database. This is what we're going to be loading into the new SNE. Okay, here's the new SNE. It has nothing in it currently. Okay, we've got to update the archive before we can load it into the new device. Okay, that's something that you need to remember. This is just the database archive. Once you do that, You've got to load that into the new engine. Now you can see after you do a refresh in your SCT archive, you can see the green arrow next to the engine name. So I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna go up to tools. I'm then going to go back to my manage archive and I'm going to select download to device, okay? And something that I want to show you as well, I currently do not have the trunks connected and I don't want those trunks connected until after I get the database loaded because you don't want it to go out trying to issue bogus commands to stuff to where you're going to be shutting stuff on and off. Uh, we've got lighting and other things tied on this system so I don't really want to shut lights off on people. So make sure that that's another step that you take as well. I always like to make sure that I'm communicating through the site director that way I know that it should work, that it's talking with the server. Now this is just a quick review screen. Once I hit the finish button on this screen, it's actually gonna start pushing the database to the new network engine. And you can see guys, we've got the network engine back online. Just to show you, 
and we're now just making sure that all of our devices have come back in and you can see that I do have the trunk plugged in now I just got to go through clean up the wiring a bit but that's the basic process of installing a, an SNE you know I've got a couple of other videos on my channel basically doing the same thing uh, if you are unsure go back check those out it might be something in those that will help you understand the basics of these again guys Keep it simple, have your IT set up the IP address based upon the MAC ID. That way you're not trying to hunt to see what the IP address is using PuTTY or Wireshark or something like that. You know, it makes it a little bit easier. Be sure to change the name to the device you're replacing prior to pairing it to the server. If it's a new device, change that name to what it's going to be prior to pairing it as well. In the event that you do have an issue, what you would do is you're basically going to demote the network engine. If for some reason the pairing doesn't take, you're going to pair it back and set itself back as its own site director. And I'm going to talk about that in a future video, guys, okay? But for now, hope you liked the video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos on my channel. Be sure to like, subscribe to my channel. Uh, check out all the links down below. Uh, let me, if you have any questions, leave those down below. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on my channel, and we'll see you next time.